Hi guys, it's Miss Evan. Today we are going to learn the four types of production. Understand the advantages and disadvantages of these. Consider the use of automated machinery in production lines and understand what's meant by lean manufacturing and just-in-time production. Now hopefully you're at least familiar with these terms. I'd like you to pause the video for a second, look at these pictures, decide which ones might be one-off, batch, massed or continuously produced. So we'll look at the answers in a quick second. First, I'd like you to watch this introductory video, which will actually give you a really good overview. So let's start with one-off production. So it is a single, unique or bespoke product designed and made. In some circumstances, it's considered a prototype. This can be an expensive and slow process because it uses highly skilled workers with very specialist tools. So here I've got for you two introductory videos, one about making a suit and one about making custom coffins. Very cool. Give that one a watch. So batch production is instead a specific quantity of identical products and usually it involves division of labour. Now these batches can be small or really quite large and it can be tricky sometimes to tell where batch and mass um, actually overlap, okay? So sometimes it's really a judgment call. Here I have two more videos for you, one on Fender guitars and one on cheese. More interesting than you might think, give it one to watch. Okay, so mass production by comparison is a high volume of identical products. These are assembled on a production line, so workers usually have a very small range of tasks. Again, the grey area uh, arises between batch and mass, but hopefully as you become more familiar, for example, I have a couple more here for you, one about bubblegum and one about crayons, hopefully that will start to, uh, start to sort of cue you in into which it might be. Okay, so last of all, we have continuous production, which is where the production line never stops. And pretty much all the processes are automated, but perhaps just overseen by, uh, by a worker, by a human. Because it would be way too costly to actually stop and restart that production. So it never turns off. So here I have two examples for you. One about Lego bricks and one about sewage. Um, sounds pretty gross, but it's a really good video. Give it a watch. Okay, hopefully now you're starting to be a bit more familiar about which category they're going to fall into. So here I have some more examples for you. Again, can you pause the video for me? Give it a think. Which one do you think it's going to be? And we'll go through the answers in a second. Okay, hopefully you've had a little think. So let's go through. First of all, we have this very jazzy chair, which of course is a one-off. Next, we have a collection of watches, and so they're going to be a batch, not going to be mass produced because the, uh, there'll be a particular uh, brand that sort of wants to stop and reproduce the next load. Next, we have things like medications, particularly aspirin, which is really cheap to produce. So that one is going to be continuously produced. Okay, how about classic Coke or similar kind of drinks? Uh, it's going to be mass produced. Uh, newspapers, um, because they come out each day, are a very large batch. Uh, we have aluminium foil next, which is also continuously produced. This little lad's chair and table set is going to be another batch production. We have the uh, iPhone or whatever kind of phone. That's also going to be batch produced. Again, very large batch. Uh, we have... Um, Brake pads, that's the word. Uh, those ones are also going to be, uh, they're going to be mass produced because they are fairly universal for pretty much all uh, wheel types, right? And then last but not least, we have this little duck and someone has 3D printed him a new foot. So that is, of course, a one-off. Okay, so let's talk more generally. Now, in school, we produce one-off prototypes for our non-exam assessment for our coursework. Right. But of course, the majority of products that you're going to see outside of school are made in quantity, whether they are a batch or mass produced or more. So because we're going from raw materials to a finished product, it's going to require a production line. 
So each production line requires substantial, expensive equipment and skilled workers to man it and maintain it and do their jobs. And we need to pay those skilled workers. So to make these costs worthwhile, you need to scale up production. Basically, that means making more of the product to make enough money to keep the production going. So we call this term economies of scale. And when we're talking about the economy, we're talking about money, right? And if the economy is going bust, then it's not doing so well. But here we're talking about trying to scale up that economy, so economies of scale. So essentially, mass production allows products to be produced at a lower cost. The more that's made, the cheaper they get. If you are going to uh, do some book binding by yourself, if that if you're actually going to be charging for your time, it could cost easily £40. It's going to be a couple of hours work at least. But if we're just buying exercise books like we ones we have at school, they're going to be 40 pence each. So the more we produce, the cheaper they get. So to implement these economies of scale, manufacturing involves a lot of machinery. So because we are trying to actually get more efficient use of time, materials, even transportation and other things. Right. So we're going to try and keep those costs down. And automation is a big part of that. So um, these processes have a machine automatically doing the same job over and over, often without human input or maybe just someone overseeing. Here I have a really good video for you. It's a, a tad longer, but it gives you a really good insight into the use of robotics. And you can watch at least just the first half. That would be great. So hopefully you found that video interesting. So you saw that the use of robotics and particularly sort of robotic arms, right? And there are advantages and disadvantages of both. So if you include robotics and machinery, you have faster production speeds. These machines can often work 24 seven. If that's continuous production, that's particularly important. You have consistent high accuracy and therefore you're going to have better quality and lower costs overall. However, of course, we're not involving people. So we're actually reducing the number of jobs. There is a huge initial investment cost. Um, each of these robots can be in the hundreds of thousands, if not more. And we don't and we've lost that human judgment. If something is about to go wrong, the, the robot will just continue um, and it doesn't know, you know, it doesn't know better. Now, mass production can be absolutely brilliant for us personally, particularly with the use of standard components or bought in components. So these are component parts that you don't have to make, right? But you can buy them for your project and companies do this too. Manufacturers do this. So things like electronics, right, and circuit parts, ribbons, fastenings, um, hardware like fixings like screws and nails and rivets, Velcro, textile uh, pieces, right. So these are mass produced, so they're really cheap to buy and manufacturers don't have to make their own on site. Therefore, they're going to save a lot of time and a lot of money. However, again, there are pros and cons, right? So the benefits is that we have standard size and consistent quality. It can reduce those manufacturing costs, as I mentioned, and we're probably going to reduce waste overall. But it means that your product that you are designing must fit those components. And actually, it could reduce your overall creativity. Um, I have another little video for you here. Um, it's not essential, but it is a really good watch and it does explain the limitations really, really well. So now we're going to do just as a side and talk about remote manufacture. So kind of like the remote that you have at home to work your television at a distance. This is about doing things at a distance. So nowadays, design companies in Europe could discuss manufacture in China. Right. And we probably know the reasons why. And that's because to make stuff, for instance, in China, they're saving on labor costs and on shipping costs. So ICT makes this information sharing possible because we live in this amazing technological age. We have things like video conferencing, so using webcams, software and apps. Uh, we can share uh, CAD models, computer aided design models, mockups and prototypes. You can just literally design it on one computer and send it thousands of miles um, across. You don't have to get you know big blueprints out anymore and roll them out in front of somebody else. And we can share software for manufacturing stock control and data sourcing. Now we're going to talk a little bit further about automation. So 
we are trying to maximize efficiency. Manufacturers are trying to save money and make things faster. One of the best examples of that is, of course, Amazon, a multi-million dollar company. Uh, this video is absolutely fascinating. You can watch at least the first half and it will give you a really, really good insight, um, particularly how the robots actually bring everything to the pickers. Uh, if you've never watched it before, you will be astounded. Give that one a watch. Astonishing, right? Those robots are just amazing. So you probably spotted some methods of efficiency here. So we had things like tagging and tracking, robot retrieval, as I was mentioning, uh, barcodes and QR codes for the robots to follow and for the pickers to scan. Uh, they were monitoring stock levels constantly, automated delivery uh, via the most efficient route, moving literally down the different conveyor belts and scanning with hand terminals, boxing and transport, that slam that they were talking about. So hopefully that was a really interesting overview. Now we need to make some notes, right? So when we're talking about automation to maximize efficiency, we're talking about things like flexible manufacturing systems as well, involving the use of automated machines in a cell. Okay, and it's called a cell because like living organisms, um, each cell does a particular job, right? Your liver cell is different to your skin cell and so on. And they're called flexible systems because it's easy to change the cells between the systems if the product changes, right? It might just be that they're making chairs, but they'll make different batches of chairs um, over different years and they want to change that flexible system. And they're best suited to mid-volume batch and mass production. And I've got two videos to really emphasise this point and they are fantastic. Give more watch. So as well as flexible manufacture, we have lean manufacture and just-in-time production. This is the best video about just-in-time production I can find. It explains it so well. Give it a watch. That was good, right? I bet you enjoyed that. So what we've learned then. So manufacture is organised around parts coming onto the production line when needed. Okay, so just-in-time. This reduces wastes, things like resources, time, money, and literally waste like rubbish at the end of it. There's pros and cons. So the advantage is there's less money tied up in stock, which saves costs. It's a flexible process and there's less waste, okay, which is obviously going to save money. However, if delivery is late, it holds up production overall and there's no spare parts to meet unexpected orders. And if there are delays, it can be time consuming. Well done, guys. We got through. I know that was a video heavy one, but hopefully they all gave you a really, really great insight to those production lines. So we learned about one off batch mass and continuous production. We learned about economies of scale, which allows products to be produced at a lower cost. Large scale industry involves CAD CAM, machinery, automation and often robotics. Standard components are cheap to buy rather than having to manufacture the parts yourself and manufacturers do that all the time. Remote manufacture uses ICT to communicate and share ideas around the world. And flexible manufacturing systems, lean manufacturing and just-in-time production all maximise efficiency and reduce costs. Well done, guys. I hope you enjoyed that one. I'll catch you next time. Bye.